Hello, Wonder Hussy here. Just a barreling down a dusty dirt road. Mm, somewhere near the border of Nevada and Utah. That's right. I've been camping and exploring this extraordinarily desolate and sparsely populated part of the United States for the last several days. And, well, there's not very many towns up this way, which means there aren't very many places to get gas, ice, food, booze, or cell signal. The other day I had to go to a town called Jackpot, Nevada, which is on the border of Idaho and Nevada, not too far from here, just to get gas. And that place was really interesting, just as all Nevada border towns are. Right now I'm on my way to another Nevada border town because it's my fourth or fifth day camping and well, <laughs> whew, <laughs> I need a shower. And I also need to wash my hair, I need to upload some videos, I need Wi-Fi, I need gas, ice, food, human companionship, cell signal, I need it all. And that's why I'm going to this other Nevada border town. Now, as I mentioned in my jackpot video, there's weird little border towns all around the state of Nevada Basically, anywhere there's a highway leading out of a neighboring state into Nevada, well, there's probably going to be a town. It's probably going to have casinos, and it might even have some brothels. Because unlike its neighboring states, Nevada has legalized prostitution and legalized gambling. So I don't think there were any brothels in Jackpot because, well, right across the border from Idaho, and those are nice God-fearing folk. And to be honest, I don't think there's going to be any brothels in this border town I'm headed to now either, because this one's on the border of Utah, and well, anyone who knows anything about Utah knows that they are the most God-fearing folk of them all. They make Idahoans look like Satanists. Anyway, the town I'm headed to is called Wendover. I mean, technically, I guess there's Wendover, Utah, and then there's West Wendover, Nevada. And well, I'll let you guess which side of town all the fun stuff is on. Actually, I got a room so that I could take a shower and get cleaned up and everything in Wendover, Utah. That's right, on the Utah side. Don't tell anyone I'm going to be smoking dope later tonight. But I also got a hot tip from a viewer that there's supposed to be a really good Mexican food cafe over in West Wendover on the Nevada side of the tracks. So I'm gonna go check into my room in Utah and then head over to Nevada to get some grub. All right, made it to town. Now I gotta go check in to my high class accommodations. All right, got the keys to the kingdom. Let's go see how janky this room is. The big reveal. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Good old Motel 6. It's nothing if not consistent. This looks like pretty much every Motel 6 room I've stayed in in the last several years. Okay, it's time to play everyone's favorite game. How much do you think I paid for this cheap motel room? I'm in Wendover, Utah. It's a Sunday night in August. Now I'm just off I-80, so that's a big traveler's corridor and it is summer travel season. So keep that in mind while I show you the amenities. Okay, so what we have here is uh, two Queen beds, non-smoking, and it doesn't smell like cigarette smoke, unlike some other rooms I've stayed in. Simple affair with a phone, a remote control, and a Bible. Then over here we do have a little flat screen TV, a desk, which will come in very handy when I'm doing my editing later tonight. And then the bathroom. Now this is always kind of the make or break. It can make it or it can break it. Oh, okay. Um, not a huge fan of these weird corner showers they do at Motel 6. They can be a little bit crowded, but I am petite, so it's plenty big enough for me. As long as the water's hot and the pressure's high, then I'll be fine. Everything looks more or less clean. Yeah, there's a little bit of water staining down there. You can see the toilet leaked, but you know, the toilet itself is clean. The shower's hmm, more or less clean. <laughs> 
They had to patch a crack down there. Whoopsie. Well, it looks like they got some major water leakage in here. Woo wee. Might be all kinds of mold in them there walls. But I'm only here overnight, so I don't really care. And then, you know, the usual Motel 6 bare bones amenity of a bar of soap. No shampoo, no lotion, no conditioner. But that's okay, I brought my own. Okay, so how much do you think I paid for this room? Do, 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 do. Time's up. The answer is, gosh, I think it was only $48 with tax. I mean, at this rate, I can't afford not to stay here. At this rate, I can't afford not to just move in and live here permanently. Okay, anyway, I better unload everything out of my car so I can go get some food at this place that I was recommended before it closes. <laughs> Okay, all settled in. Now let's go get some food. Oh man, this place looks like it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> if judging from the outside is any recommendation. I mean, any place where you can hear mariachi music has to be good. Oh man, I don't understand. Man, it says it's open 10 to nine every damn day. Said it was open on Google. Well, uh, whoever recommended this place to me, I'm sure it's awesome if it friggin' was open. Fortunately, I did see a taco truck up the street there. I'll just go there. Although I am really curious where that mariachi music is coming from. Looks like there's like a little kind of depressing apartment complex over there called La Jolla. And that's where the music was coming from. Well, maybe that's where everybody from the restaurant went. Oh man, this town is going to be very interesting to drive around and kind of snoop out in the morning. I don't have time tonight. I just need to get these tacos and get back to my room. Oh man, I hope this is decent. I mean, it doesn't bode well that they have a sign for the place I was trying to go right out front. <clears throat> anyway, they didn't really have that many options on the menu here. So I just had to get a veggie burrito and a couple of shrimp tacos. All right, here we go. I got a veggie burrito and two shrimp tacos. Yum, gotta love them desert shrimp. Fake coffee. Okay, well, I survived my night in this $48 Motel 6 room. What are my thoughts? Uh, well, the shower water was hot. The shower water pressure was good. The bed was comfortable. Things were quiet. Uh, the only complaint I had was, well, that spot on the shower floor where it's taped was kind of weird to step on. Like it was spongy. So shower wasn't the most pleasant I've ever had. And then a lady did try to come in my room uh, yesterday evening when I was having dinner because the guy at the front desk gave her the same room as me. Whatever. She was cool. I had my deadbolt fastened, so she wasn't able to get in anyway. So would I stay here again? Uh, mm, yeah, I guess. The only... Real downside, aside from the shower and the lady trying to come in, was that uh, the Wi-Fi was really slow. I mean, I had to leave my computer on overnight just to upload a video to YouTube. Well, it was like a 28 minute video, so it was a long one. But that's literally the whole reason I come to these places is to get Wi-Fi so I can upload videos and wash my hair. So, hey, at least my hair is clean. Anyway, now it's time to load up the car and go check out Wendover. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, this hotel being right off Interstate 80 and all. Uh, you think it would have been noisier or busier, but it was actually pretty quiet. And here's something else I thought was kind of interesting about the parking lot. There's like these patches of salt crust all over the place. And well, you might be wondering why there are patches of salt in the desert. It's not like they salt the roads here. I don't think it snows here. Well, that's because the famous Bonneville Salt Flats are literally right down the road there. And so I guess a lot of people who stay here go out and drive around on the salt flats. And then they come back here and dump all that salt from their undercarriage into the parking lot. 
far out. Well, I'm actually gonna go check out those salt flats myself later today. But right now, I'm gonna cruise around the little town of Wendover and just see what it would be like to live here. Okay, so like I said yesterday, I'm staying in Wendover, Utah, but <laughs> there's also West Wendover, Nevada. It's all basically one town, but when you get to the state line of Utah, Nevada, it changes. <laughs> and that's why there's all them casinos up that way. And according to what I read on Wikipedia, uh, I think the economy is way better in West Wendover, you know, because of all the casinos. There's like five pretty major casinos. So I'm going to explore Wendover, Utah first because, well, it just kind of seems more busted and down and out. I mean, if that Mexican neighborhood I went to yesterday was any indication. I mean, it's a beautiful setting. You're right there under those dramatic rock formations right on the other side of Interstate 80. But, you know, the main street isn't always representative of what's really going on in town. So let's go down the street here. And speaking of the name Wendover, I also read last night that it literally just came from the fact that I guess the early pioneers had to wend over the desert to get over this mountain pass into Nevada. That's where the name Wendover comes from. Fun fact. Oh, look, the train. Doot, doot. The old Union Pacific heading on into Wendover to pick up a big old load of potash. I think that's how you pronounce that. Potash, potash. There's a big potash mine uh, on the Bonneville Salt Lake actually or salt flat and I th I'm guessing that's where most of these people who live here must work because I can't imagine there's that many jobs here I mean yeah you can work at the casinos but well if you worked at a casino when you just live in Nevada why would you live in Utah I don't get it lots of trailer park homes but also it looks like there's a reasonable neighborhood of actual framed homes too and some of them are pretty nice I guess this might be a good place to raise kids i don't know i mean what do you do if you're a kid i guess you climb up on that hill there behind the motel six and write your name on the rocks <laughs> classic americana though okay i think i read that the population of wendover utah is about well as of the last census about 1400 people so it's not a very big town but apparently it's big enough to have its own school wendover high school Oh, the Wendover Wildcats. Oh, hey, dang, look at this. They even have a Utah State University branch in Wendover. That's wild. Pretty impressive for a town of 1,400, but I guess they're so far from any other Utah towns where they could go to college. And, you know, to that end, why do they even bother having their own Wendover school district when they could just combine with West Wendover and have one big school district that's all funded by them casinos? Like, makes sense to me. Uh, and from what I was reading last night, it seems like mo most of the people in... Wendover and West Wendover do want to combine and become one town, but I guess it takes an act of, well, an act of Congress, or I don't know, Congress did approve it, but then it got stalled in the Senate, and I guess there was some local politician who was against it. I don't know if it was because of the evils of gambling or what, but... Well, speaking of the evils of gambling, now let's go on into West Wendover, Nevada. Okay, here we are. We're going to pass right on into Nevada as evidenced by these giant casinos on either side of us. There's the Wendover Nugget. Ooh, they got a Starbucks. Over here, we got the Montego Bay Casino. <laughs> Fancy. Welcome to West Wendover, where we can now smoke dope legally. Yahoo! Okay, so I'm curious if this is gonna be like in the Wizard of Oz where they go from black and white to color. <laughs> uh, maybe not, I don't know. But, well, just on first glance, West Wendover does look way more developed. Look off to the side though, it's just barren desert. Okay, it looks like they got a pepper mill casino here with a concert hall. Oh, a big park, that's nice. Shade trees, grass, probably paid for with casino dollars. Oh, it looks like there's even a stoplight up ahead. That's a big deal. Oh, let's see how much gas is here in Nevada. 405, ouch. I think it was a little bit cheaper in Utah. I'll get gas on the other side. There's a rainbow casino. Then we have a red garter casino. Never heard of that before either. Okay, I guess that's pretty much the end of the casino district, but that's cool because I really want to just see what the real West Wendover is all about. You know, casinos, they, I can see those any day of the week I want back home in Vegas. But there is one more thing we need to check out in the casino district. And that is this giant neon cowboy. I guess I should have come here last night to check him out. <laughs> Look at this, Wendover Will. 
welcomes you to West Wendover, Nevada. <laughs> it looks kind of terrifying. It's like the old Vegas Vic cowboy that they used to have on, on Fremont Street in Las Vegas. Well, I guess he's still there, but it's different now. Anyway, I guess that guy lights up at night, and yeah, I should have come here last night, but oh well, shoulda, coulda, woulda. All right, now let's go into these neighborhoods. Oh, look, gas is only $3.95 here. I'll go here. I got to get groceries anyways. Okay, this definitely looks more like real homes and less trailer homes. So guessing that West Wendover people have, well, just have more money than people in regular Wendover. You know what I mean? Like these are tidy, well-kept homes. They got RVs. But I don't know. Surely there's got to be some janky neighborhoods, and that's what I'm all about. I want to go see the bad part of West Wendover. I'm curious where two things are in West Wendover. <laughs> now because it's Nevada and weed is legal, there's a dispensary here somewhere. And then, well, because it's Nevada, there's also a strip club here. So I'm guessing the dispensary and the strip club are probably in the red light district and I want to try to find that. Oh, okay, looks like here's some trailers. Let's check this out might find some more interesting things to look at down this way. Well, I guess that was actually a pretty nice mobile home park. Well, maybe there is no bad part of town in West Wendover. Maybe Wendover itself is the bad part of town, you know, like the wrong side of the tracks, so to speak, the wrong side of the state line. Okay, where is this titty bar? I guess it's on the outskirts of town, so I'll have to maybe go even farther past the grocery store. Oh, I see it. It is. It's right by the grocery store. But it's like kind of on a berm up above the grocery store, so we can't get to it here. Let me see. I probably have to go around the block. You know how they do with this stuff. They try to keep it tucked away, inaccessible, keep the good God-fearing kids of Wendover out of trouble. I just think it's funny that the Nevada side of the tracks is actually the nicer side. I would have thought it'd be the opposite because, well, if you've ever driven around Utah, all the little Mormon towns are so tidy. And there it is, the old Southern Exposure Show Club. I don't even know why I wanted to drive by and look at this. I was reading the Google reviews online and uh, it's not even a real strip club. They wear bikinis. So I don't, I guess because it's so close to Utah, so I don't know what kind of Southern exposure they're talking about with that name. I mean, you're not even getting Northern exposure, let alone Southern exposure. Okay, well, this is convenient because I gotta get some supplies anyways and some gas. So let me go in here and do that. My provisions are restocked. Should be good for another hmm, five days out in the middle of nowhere. But before I leave Wendover slash West Wendover, I actually want to head back over to Wendover because probably the most interesting thing about this town is back on the other side of the tracks. Okay, so go figure. This interesting thing is right down the same street i already drove down to go to that cafe last night that was closed okay this billboard here might give you a clue as to where we're going oh man it looks like that cafe is open now dang look how many cars are in the parking lot it must be good well why weren't you open last night you idiots okay so this is the old historic wendover airfield you can see the ass end of a plane in front of us right here might as well get out and take a look around. Okay, I don't know what this plane is or what its significance is. Somebody watching probably does. It says U.S. Marshal on the side, but it's open. You can just walk right into it. So let's see. Whoa, this is actually super friggin' badass. Look at this. We can climb right into the cockpit like where the pilot would have sat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do they really, they don't have steering wheels like this in airplanes, do they? Or maybe they used to. I thought they had those like U-shaped controllers. Wow, I wonder how old this plane is. Look at a little peek at the controls. <laughs> Wild, man. 
<laughs> I didn't even expect to be able to get in a plane here today. But dang, I shouldn't turn the opportunity down when it presents itself, you know? Not every day you get the chance to sit in a friggin' <laughs> cockpit pilot seat. Ooh, it's bright in here. Bombs away! Woo! Uh, I think my controls are broken. Where's the yaw? Oh gosh, it's actually really hot in this cockpit because the sun is blazing through the windows. Let's go back down and check out the rest of this thing. I'm back down the ladder. Wow, this is wild. What is this like a... I mean, it looks like it was maybe just a some kind of cargo carrier or maybe troop transport carrier. Floor plugs and D-rings over on that side. There's some kind of little holder for brochures or time cards. Stanchion feet and pip pins. First aid. Wow, man, just look at all the wires that were cut off. I guess they salvaged the copper. This is a trip, man. I have no idea what all this stuff is. Fuses. Holy cow. And then look, you can walk right up into the tail. Yikes. This, it doesn't say not to walk in here. <laughs> wow. Okay, this is pretty impressive that they just let you climb in here and climb around without any ropes or glass or warning signs. I'm a fan, but there's only so long I can stay in this hot old airplane. I actually came here to see something else. Look, that's what we just climbed up into, the tail of that plane. Isn't that wild? <laughs> okay, the thing I wanted to see, oh, I think it's a little bit farther down the runway, which by the way, this is still an operational airfield, uh, despite the fact that there's some old bombs sitting on it. <laughs> I mean, look, you can see there's an air traffic control tower. There's even a little museum over there with another bomb in front of it. But I'm sorry, I don't have time, nor frankly, to be perfectly honest, interest in going to a military air museum right now. There's plenty of other YouTube channels that go into that kind of stuff. I'm just here to look at weird things. So I'm gonna check out this one other thing and then wrap. Okay, we're here. And by here, I mean, this is the hangar where they housed the Enola Gay, okay? That was the plane that they flew to drop the atomic bombs over Japan back in World War II. That's pretty wild. I mean, I'll give you another look at the sign because it has a lot of useful information on it. It says, this hangar was built specifically to house the new B-29 aircraft, often referred to as the Enola Gay Hangar, the 393rd Bombardment Squadron of the 509th Composite Group utilized this hangar for their operations and maintenance. And here they are, they're loading a fat man bomb onto a B-29 from the Wendover loading pit. Oh, where's the bomb? Oh, is that it? Oh wow, it's like in an underground thing and they're loading it up in the belly so that when it flew over those poor people in Japan, which yes, I understand we were at war, it was curtains for them. Wow. Well, this is wild, man. I guess that was the hangar. I mean, it looks like it's been really well maintained. It's not rusty or anything. It looks almost new. I guess because it's a historic thing. They take better care of it. Wow, I did not expect to find the Enola Gay hangar in Wendover, but... <laughs> Just goes to show how much research I did before I came here. Apparently it's known for having this historic World War II airfield. I mean, I guess these old buildings were all like barracks or something to house the enlisted guys that lived out here back in World War II. I'm not sure how that worked. I mean, there's a ton of these little buildings all over the place. I mean, holy cow, these buildings are all just sitting out here, rotting away, half the windows are blown out. Yeah, they're boarded up, but there's no signs on them that say, like, no trespassing or anything. It's like, no telling what's in some of these. Okay, hold everything. I think I just found the coolest place to live in all of Wendover, West Wendover, all of Utah, or all of Nevada. Look at this, man. It's an old church that's been converted into apartments. Isn't that wild? <laughs> It says chapel apartments. Can you imagine living in an old church? Be kind of cool. I mean, was this like the actual old historic base chapel? It doesn't say. I mean, the sign is over here on this empty lot next to the chapel apartments, but I don't know. Maybe they just built that to look like a church and named it chapel apartments to sort of piggyback on that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short but 
super interesting tour of the tiny and mysterious twin towns of Wendover and West Wendover, Utah and Nevada. It's not just them casinos up there on the hill. There's a whole lot more to this weird place. So next time you're driving down I-80 and you pass through Wendover, take my word for it, pull off.